everybody, welcome back here to the Mountain Dew Racing Series. We're here back at Thunder Valley, the Bristol Motor Speedway, the half mile that has taken a lot of cars out of races, but also have helped teams turn around their season and it catapulted them into the chase. What is going to happen today, we don't know, but the Chevy 500 Race 24 here in Season 6 of the Mountain Dew Series is about to go green for 75 laps under the lights. Packed crowd today, looks like it's sold out. But why wouldn't you want to be here? Great, exciting racing, one of the probably the best races of the season. But we don't know what's going to happen today. We'll have to wait and find out. If you haven't been up to date on my Facebook page for the series, I threw out a uh, chase lock-in scenario post today. And well, when I upload this, it will not be today. But I did as of February 24th after race through uh, 23 at Michigan, and basically talked about that it's starting to get to the point now where lock-in scenarios are going to happen. I only really talked about three people, which was Danny Wells, who's the points leader, who if he could stay where he is right now, he will be, I think, basically locked into the chase after today. Joshua Mudd, who has two wins, is almost a guarantee as well. As well as Dylan Young, who is ninth in points, and Josh is second, by the way, and uh, Dylan Young, ninth in points with two wins. He needs to gain a few more points on 25th in points. Other than that, then he'll be locked in. The only scenario for him, he can actually follow the top 25 still at this point, but it's getting to the point where he just needs to finish decent, and he'll be locked in. Other than that, everybody else is kind of wide open, and after this race, it'll be more clear to see who will make it in. As uh, the magic number coming in today's race being 136 points ahead of 25th in points will keep you in the top 25. Danny Wells is the only driver right now that is in that position, but he only has one win, so if he finishes pretty well today, and he stays 91 points ahead of 21st in point, or uh, 25th in points, I should say, after today's race at Bristol, then Danny Wells should be in the chase. Joshua Mutt also could possibly be in the chase after today. Other people like Ian Detta, who doesn't have a win, uh, Red Bell, Trent Donald, people like that close in points, they're not so locked in just yet. Again, Trent's the only one of those people that has a win. Ian, Red, and uh, Steven up there in points do not. So we have to wait and see how those drivers fare today after we get done with Bristol. Without further ado, I have not even seen the lineup. It was randomized again by one of my friends. I'm not going to say the name. And on the polar day is actually the points leader, Danny Wells, who's in the best spot. Like I said, this is the first time I've even seen it myself. So that's random to see this. But Danny in the Rockstar Energy colors for Stuart Haas Racing. And then is the points leader, like I said. He is starting on the polar day. Outside of him is Sean Galligan. Galligan is... 21st in points with the win as of right now. He would be, let's see, fourth in line for a wild card spot out of the six spots. He's currently behind 14th in points, Tim Fiegel, 16th in points, Joshua Balkin, 20th in points, James Silverfox, and then 21st, 22nd, 23rd have wins, which is Galligan, then James Qualls, who's fifth in line, and Justin Perry, who's the last driver to qualify for a wild card spot. And they're in a little bit of a good cushion right now as well. The only downfall is Dylan Young, if he falls out of the top 10 in points, or Joshua Mudd, they have two wins, so that knocks one of those guys out. And they have to watch out for the drivers that are outside of the top 25 that have wins, which include, let's see, 29th through 34th in points, each have a win. Seth Cole, Randy Carpenter, Sky Commons, Joseph Lombard, Joshua Collard, and Michael Norman. But they have to make a gap up. They're pretty far back from 25th, but can still be made up, so got to watch out for that. A lot can happen, especially today. Anyway, row two has Noah Boggs. He's in different colors this week. The uh, mechanics wear Polaris Ford for Penske Racing or Team Penske. Outside him is Michael Norman looking to make some points up today. Former winner of the season like Galligan and Danny Wells. Joshua Balkin, 16th in points, starts 5th. That is Andreas Allen in the Avocare colors this week. He starts in the 6th position in the Wood Brothers 21. Trent Dunham, a I believe a former winner here at Bristol. I'm not for sure. I think he has won once here. Dylan Young, two-time winner this season. And then Michael Walton and Joseph Lombard round out the top ten. I'm trying to remember who actually won here at Bristol. Hmm, that's a good question. If I remember real quick, I'll let you guys know. Let's get ready to go racing here. Under the lights at Bristol Motor Speedway for the running of the Sharpie 500. Let's get ready to go green for race 24. As you look at your starting lineup over to the side, we don't have much time to look at it. I do remember who won this race earlier in the season. That was Sky Commons, who's actually starting last today. Well, I just noticed that. So I have to see how he does. Well, the other rest of the pack, as we're not going to have much time to talk, the radio chatter is already going on. 
pace car is about to head off for 75 laps, no caution, possibly one or two pit stops, at least one, but we're not going to waste any time. The green flag is out, the Sharpie 500 is underway. Oh, Joshua Mudd, I think just got turned to the inside wall. Oh, I think he saved it. I saw him get sideways. I don't know what happened. Looking for the 88. There he is. I think his friend Tim Fiegel got into him. That's a pretty cool little paint scheme he's running today. Showing Dale Senior on the front of it that's under that car possibly. And we're at Bristol, so why not let this car run here? That is back in 11th place. So that got really edgy right there. As the top two are pulled away, it is Danny Wells and Noah Boggs. And they have separated themselves from the pack. Look at the gap back to third place. Joshua Balkin. And Noah Boggs wants that lead. And I'll try to keep up with everything that happened in case Rex happened. It's going to be tough to do that. So you guys are flying around the track around 13 second lap times. Danny Wells already led some laps. This is going to really help him almost secure a spot into the chase. Where he's running right now, he'll be definitely as well as if he wins the second race. Go back here. Ooh, there's contact. Joseph Lombard's going to get into Trent. Puts the one car in the wall right in front of Michael Norman and a lot of the field. Oh man, they're going to pile up now. Man, Lombard just dumped Trent and Dunham. What was that about? And Michael Norman, who needed a good run, is involved. Sean Hindley right there. Oh, they're still breaking Sky Commons guy. Jessica Shelton. McLeod is trying to get going. Keith Batson. Jacob Lawler, who's 25th in points coming to today's race. He's involved. Alex Drayden is on pit road. In the Quaker State Colors this week. And Menards. Michael Norman, that is not what he needed. That could be the nail in the coffin for the three team to make it into the chase this season. He's 34th in points. Keith Batson, 24th in points was involved. Charles Jackson's driving around the racetrack slow. He's on the apron for about a lap. Charles is trying to make his first chase, and it's starting to look dim for him as well. He's 19th in points. Not a good time to have struggles this season. Jacob Waller, this, this is good for the drivers that are trying to get into the top 25. 25th, 24th got involved in that wreck. Danny Wells still leading. That's a tough break for Sky Common, who's been debuting his new paint scheme, the Cartoon Network, HendrickCars.com Chevrolet. It's not been the start with this team or this car so far. It's been a tough outing so far. And it's just been a struggle so far. And we're going to take a quick commercial break. I'm going to need to go check on something. Sean Hindley is coming through. Oh, that's not good for him. I'm going to get to the leaders. Danny Wells is still leading the way, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. All right, we are back, and as you look over to the right, three drivers already dropped out of the race. Keith Batson, Jacob Lawler, and Michael Norman are out of the race. 24th, 25th in points. That's pretty crucial right there for the 99 the 56 are still trying to make the chase. Michael Norman was one of the last guys that had a win. 34th in points, this is not what he was looking for. Sky Commons, who got involved in a wreck, he's coming to pit road now. Uh, Looks like he's going to sweep here at Bristol today. Alex Dream was also involved in the crash, as well as Charles Jackson and Sean Henley. This is huge about Henley. He was 11th in points. Not quite sure where he is. There's Trent Dunn on Trent. Fifth in points. He has a win, which helps him, so it's not as bad. That Trent's the hedgy machine. It's not quite up to speed. But hoping maybe more things happen. He can salvage a good finish. Charles Jackson's back on the track. Gets into the 55 of Steve Gonzalez. This guy's at 11 on back. I think Seth Cole is 12th. Seth, another driver. Really probably happy that the 56 and the 99 have problems today. He's 13th. Oh, this is 12th, 11th. Right here is 11th. Joshua Collard. Seth Cole. A couple of drivers really happy to see those guys wrecked, though, for sure. There's Henley. Henley right now is 35th. Not what he was meaning. Dylan Young right now running 7th. Well, all the wildcard drivers want to see their in contention. Dylan Young, Joshua Mudd, they want them to stay in the top 10 points, especially this two car who's ninth in points. Currently running 7th and 8th right here. Here's Joshua Mudd in the 88. Should I give a hand or shout out to the Everham cars right now? Michael Walton, 6th. Zachary Fitzwater is 10th. Joshua Collard is 11th. We're in the front, there's Justin Perry. I think Perry's a lap down. Yes, he is. He's 33rd. That's 23rd in points. One of the wildcard contenders as well. He has a win. He's the last wildcard holder as of right now to get in the chase. Joseph Lombard, he got behind. Or no, he's actually fifth. That's what he was named. James McLeod, I think he's a lap down. Yes, he is. There's Joshua Balkin, Sean Galligan, Noah Boggs, and Danny Wells still leading the way. He's in a little bit of an RCR mess right now. Sky Commons and Jessica Shelton. Shelton also, like Trent, got involved in the wreck. 
or maybe she got behind, I think, but um, she's not really in bad shape. She has a win as well. It's also going to be on pit road, I think. That's, oh, Tim Walsh is on pit road in the 15. 13th in points. I don't know if Tim had any damage or not, but that Toyota is coming back on the racetrack, but he's going to go lap down. Don't know what happened there. That's user Silver Fox coming to pit road. That's 20, uh, 20th in points. So these guys are making pit stop. I don't know if something happened or what. I'm not quite sure. But right now, Danny Wells has been leading the way so far. He's led every lap so far. Going by Sky Commons. A little bit of a watch again back to Noah Boggs. Teammate Sean Galligan. Looks like that's all the way back to the fifth position with Joseph Lombard as well and Balkan involved in this, is, this situation. But this is the this, uh, icing on the cake for Danny Wells. If he can just pull off the victory today, get his second win of the season. And it would lock him into the chase. And you can see Danny bound for the championship for the first time since season four. Other driver we, we expect to make the chase include Jessica Shelton, Trent Dunham, uh, let's see, Joshua Mudd, Dylan Young, and they are pitting. Here they come. Danny Wells is already jumping to pit road. Balkan jumped in, Galligan, Lombard. I guess they're going to make two pit stops. Joshua Mudd already came in, so they look like they are making pit stops. The strategy's already begun. Noah Boggs on a lap. He's going to cycle the lead over, possibly to Ron Acosta. Nope, he's pitting. Collard. James Qualls is staying out. Qualls is needing to lead a lap. 22nd in points. Qualls has a wildcard spot, so he definitely wants to lead a lap and get every point. Trent Dunham let him go. He let him go by. Qualls stayed out and led a lap. Don't know who's second. I think everybody else is on pit road. They're seeing Walton leaving, Dylan Young pitting. And leaving now. Randy Carpenter stayed out. McLeod also stayed out. He's coming in. I'm trying to figure out who's going to be leading as everybody's coming in. Now, there probably will be another pit stop then as we're on lap 30 already. Keep it on the 88 car and see if he comes out. I think he's not going to be leading. Let me see. Or Danny Wells. I think he's going to end up cycling back to the lead, possibly. Actually, no. Danny lost a lot of ground up here. I see a few people ahead of him. See, the 12th car is leading. Yep, Sean Galligan cycled around to the lead. Joshua Balk is now second. James Qualls is now... Th uh, I don't think he's third. Third place, possibly, is Michael Walton now. And Danny Wells... Oh, so, did some, oh something just happened to the 22. Noah Bog just dropped off the pace. He was running in, I think, the fourth position. Just cut it down back to pit row. Noah Boggs. I don't know what happened to him. That's a tough break. Something just happened to the 22. I'm not sure what happened, but he just slowed all of a sudden, and that was about it. And that's just going to take Noah out of attention for the win today. Looking for John Galligan once again. Oh, Trent Dunham just ducked to pit road. Thank you for Chris Dollard, and... and Everybody checked up. That's going to let Balkin get to the inside of Galligan for the race lead. Can he get it, though? He's, he's trying. That outside gives a heck for a run. Galligan went way in the corner. I think Balkin's going to clear him right here. Galligan's trying to fight back. Third place car is not up there. It's right in the back of this pack. Michael Walton, that Stanley Tools dodge. As Balkin has cleared Sean Galligan for the race lead. The check up ahead from Trent Dunham and Chris Dollardin just cost Galligan the race lead. Joshua Balkan, a former winner this season. Uh, season. I want to say he won at Kentucky. I'm not quite sure. But now he's leading the way. He would love to pick up a second win. We've only had two multi-time winners this season. And looking back here now, Danny Wells just got around Galligan, and so did Michael Walton. That's going to kick Galligan back to the fourth position after leading. We look at the top ten rundown right now. Joshua Balkan is leading. Michael Walton is second. Danny Wells third. Sean Gallagher fourth. Joseph Lombard is fifth. The rest of your top ten is Ryan Acosta in sixth. Dylan Young seventh. Seth Cole is eighth. We got a battle for ninth between Steve Gonzalez and Joshua Collard. And this is big for Steven, who's trying to stay in the top ten points. And he is the defending winner of this race. He only has one career win. And it came in this race one season ago. So he's backing up his performance from last season, running really well again today. He's had a dismal kind of on and off weeks lately. He's been wrecking a lot. And he's trying to stay in the top 10 in points. Pollard's looking to get by. Here comes James Qualls. Joshua Mudd got kicked to the high side. Here comes Tim Frey, like another driver, trying to find a way to get back to victory lane. He won 
think three times I've seen. Oh, Andreas Allen just really got out of the gas. Just about got ran over by Cody Lamas. New colors there for Michael Cozy this week. More exhausted, different kind of variation of that paint scheme. Looks really nice. There's Zachary Fitzwater. This is 16-17 right here. 18th is not Tim Walt. Or actually, it is Tim. He cycled back around. He must have pit early. There's one of the Sharpie cars. Aaron Reed. Jack Richards, top 20. Cold Alley. Came in the trace 12th in points, running 21st right now. Tony Blazer is 22nd. Randy Carpenter 23rd. Jay Silverfox 24th. Last week's winner is Zach Buchanan, who won finally, is in 25th. Red Bell is 26th. 27th is Ian Dutto, 28th, Tim Fiegel, 29th, Chris Dollarton. That's all that's on the lead left. And there is Noah Box. He's back on the racetrack. I don't know if what happened to the 22, but now he finds himself two laps down in 34th place. And still only three cars are out of the race. Looks at the rest of the field. McLeod is a lap down. McLeod's trying to get back on the lead lap, but he has a lot to make up. He's trying to get around the leader. He looks pretty fast, actually, because he's pulled up the back bumper of the Budweiser Chevy. And there's some positions up ahead he can get. So McLeod's still trying to get something to work out for him. Still trying to make a chase in this season. Trying to make it three seasons in a row, I believe. This last season he got into the LCQ race, which is not happening this season. It was just because it dragged out so much last season I did that race. But there will not be an LCQ race this season. It'll just be after 26, and then we start the chase. Chris Washer is a lap down right now, I believe, in the 30th position. This is not what Washer was looking for, but again, has a win to fall back on. I'm going to go back a little bit. There's Sean Henley. Henley right now in 35th place. Jessica Sheldon 33rd. Alex Green 36th. See. Noah Boggs is 34th. I'm skipping around. Tim Walsh actually is two laps down in 32nd. I think Tim just pitted. Yes, he did. Uh, let's see. Sky Commons, the last winner we had here at Bristol, is 37th. Charles Jackson 38th. There's like six, seven laps down. Trent Dunham 39th. Eight laps down. There's Silver Fox. So we got these people pitting early. I don't know if it's really been helping or not, but I don't know. Oh, and Balkan got held up behind Trent Dunham. Look at all the cars getting their laps back. And here comes Michael Walton, the eighth, trying to get back down, but he cannot get out behind the five car. And Michael Walton, in a second stint this season, in two seasons, been a part-time driver, being a replacement, got in another ride this season, this time in the ten car. Michael Walton is to the lead. Danny Wells is trying to take second away from Balkan. Joseph Lombard trying to take third, falling through in the Pepsi machine. Galligan right there in fourth. There's a gap back to Ryan Acosta who's trying to work his way up here as well. As he's, that's the four and the eight are racing side by side for second. Michael Walton in that Everham Dodge is pulling away. It's been a while since that 10 car I think went to victory lane I believe. I'm trying to think right now. It almost won the Daytona 500 with Leo Rogers who was the driver early in the season. Ended up finishing third as Walton's coming to pit road now. He's going to come now with 21 laps to go. Danny Wells to the lead. Joseph Lombard's going on the lead now in the inside of the four. Danny's rim riding. That'd be huge for that 24 car to lead a lap as Galligan ducks to pit road as well as Joshua Balkan. Oh, Acosta got held up right there and lost so much time. That's why you have to watch out. These guys just duck to pit road. Here comes Seth Cole, Cody Lamas, Steven Gonzalez, Zach Fitzwater. Anyway, that's going to Zach Cannon's coming in. I think the leader's coming in this time by. There's Aaron, uh, Aaron Reed, there's Lombard, and Wells. James Qualls is staying out once again. Qualls has been stretching a lot longer than other drivers. I saw Carpenter try to do the same thing. And a couple others. I think McLeod also did. If this time's out right, these guys might be in good shape. Acosta's still leading. I think he just came to pit road. Did he? Where is the 16? There he is. Acosta's right there. I think Qualls just came in. Not having a good time finding these people. McLeod's in. There's Qualls. Andreas Allen might have cycled around to the lead. No, he's right there. We're going to keep an eye on the racetrack. There's Lombard leaving. Here's Wells. This is huge right here. These two racing side by side. And he doesn't really want to give it up. But keeping a car in one piece is more important. Walton advances up ahead. There's Joshua Mudd. Is he going to be cycling around? I don't know if he's going to be the leader or not. don't think so. I think Mudd was in the back of this pack. Paul is leaving pit road right now, and so is McLeod. And I think Walton is cycled back to the race lead. It looks like he is, and he's really 
put a gap out on the other drivers now. I don't know if they're going to have to pit again or not, but Walton is definitely leading the way in the 10 car. Second now is going to be, it looks like Lombard. Danny Wells is third. Walton is now fourth. Galligan, I actually have Noah Boggs cycled over there, but I think he just hit pit road because he's off sequence now with the leaders. Yes, he did. So Noah was fifth place, but it's kind of cycled back around. It's not really going to help him. So we're going to let this cycle around. Looks like Michael Walton, Joseph Lombard, Danny Wells, Joshua Balkin, and Sean Gallagher in the top five. Dylan Young moved up to six. James Balls is advanced to seven. Michael Cozy in the top ten. Eighth, Ryan Acosta slipped to ninth. And Seth Cole rounds out the top ten. After a couple of wrecks early in the race, the race has basically became clean. They have racing really well, and it's been pretty good racing we've seen so far. So this would be huge. Another first-time winner possibility in this 10 car, Michael Walton. He's not ran a full season yet. He came in last season about halfway through the season and got in the 43 car at then Richard Petty Motorsports. I think he's on the pole like one of his first races at Daytona. He actually almost, I think he almost won this race a season ago, I believe. Or maybe, I don't know if it was him or somebody else. No, I think it was somebody else, I'm pretty sure, but Walton not really been talked about a lot. they kind of up and down so far, but uh, he's trying to get something going today. Maybe pick up his first career win. And then, like, for this season, he replaced Leo Rogers about 12 races into the season. I think it was somewhere around that time. Walton took the lead, or uh, took the reins of this car, and we had a wreck. Oh, who was that? I think that was Sky Commons. Tony Blazer was damaged. It was Sky Commons. He just got into a big wreck. Alex Drain's on pit road. Henley's on pit road. Was there anybody else involved? Doesn't look like it. And the 31 car is destroyed. The 47 got a piece of it. I want to see what happened if we can. Oh, Blazer wrecked ahead of him. Blazer's going to get some help from Dylan Young, who's running 7th right in front of James Qualls. Wow, what a great job by the 6th car right there. And unfortunately, it took the Commons out in the process. Look at the damage on that 31 car, though. Wow. That's a tough break for Sky. Last winner we had here, and like that, it's it for the 31, and the 27 and damage, Drayton is coming back on the racetrack, I don't know if these guys are going to have to pit again, I don't think they will, Michael Walton, oh man, his lead is gone, wait, where's Walton, oh, there he is, man, they were, he was right, or Lombard was right there, and he got held up in that slow traffic, and Walton actually emerged away from that, I kind of, hey, did I miss it, oh, Trent just got turned, he's going to come back up the racetrack, oh, He got some help right there. Zach Buchanan just gave Trent a little bit of a bump. Or actually, no, it was Justin Perry, I believe that was. Sorry, my bad. Man, he turned Trent hard in the inside wall. I think Trent's taking the car back to the garage, and we're about to hit the white flag. Fast-paced racing here at Bristol. And can't say rookie, but second-season veteran Michael Walton in his second stint in the Mountain Race Series. Part-time once again. Maybe trying to land a full-time ride, maybe possibly the next season. Doing a good auditioning today, and it looks like Michael Walton is going to tame the Thunder Valley of Bristol Motor Speedway, and Michael Walton in the 10 Valve, or, uh, Valvoline Stanley Tools Dodge is going to win the Sharpie 500, his first career Mountain Race Series victory. And this race is in the books. And they are drag racing to the line. Well, I don't know. <laughs> that looks pretty cool, though. But this race is officially done. And that guy right there, Michael Walton, is going to victory lane. As another Everham car goes to victory lane as well. We saw uh, Joshua Collard win back in Indianapolis in the 43. James Silver Fox early this season at Texas in the 91. And now Walton in the 10 car. One of the five Everham cars. One of the only five Dodgers in the field that picked up the wins. So Dodgers picked up three victories this season. So that's pretty cool to see that. As we're going to go ahead and save this. This is race 24. Race is now official. Congrats to Michael Walton on the victory in the Stanley Tools drive. I meant to say Stanley first instead of Valvoline, but I just went with it since it's kind of co-sponsor uh, co anyway. Michael Walton is the winner. Joseph Lombard, what a great run for him. He has struggled heavily this season, at, even though he's won at Dover. It's been a struggle. This is huge for him. Gets a second place finish. Joshua Balkin, really going to help him out as well. Get closer to the top ten. He's up third. Danny Wells, who's dominant car early in the race. I think he had a slow pit stop. Never could catch back up. He'll get a fourth place finish, and I'm pretty sure I can safely say Danny Wells is locked into the chase now. So congrats to Danny. If he's with, you know, like, had it, oh, 91 points up, which I know he has to be. 
He should be in the chase. Sean Galligan ends up fifth. Dylan Young, his teammate, sixth. James Qualls, seventh. Seth Cole, eighth. Ryan Acosta, ninth. And Cody Lamas rounds out the top ten. So a couple of Hendrick cards up there. Randy Carpenter, 11th. Steve Gonzalez, 12th. Andreas Allen, 13th. Cole Daly, 14th. Zachary Fitzwater, 15th. You got Silver Fox, Walsh, Mud, who I think also possibly locked himself in with that 18th place finish. We'll have to wait and see. I believe he did, though. Tim Fiegel uh, and Joshua Collard were the last cars on the lead lap. Top 20 were only ones on the lead lap. Don't know what happened to Michael Cozy. He might have had to pit. He was up there in the top 10. I don't know what happened there. Uh, Dollarton, Red Bell, uh, Jack Richards, McLeod. I think they just came to pit road and they retired, I believe. Because I saw McLeod come to pit road. Ian Duddick took a hit right there, 26. Tim Fralick. That's supposed to say Aaron Reed. Just ignore that. It's not Kurt Busch. It'll be fixing the points again. Uh, Chris Washer, Zach McCann, top 30. And you got the rest of the field. See Shelton, Henley, Jackson, Dunham. Dunham just had a terrible day. I bet he's glad today's over. Saw Sky Commons getting a lot of wrecks today. That just killed his car. Just another bad race for him. Uh, Keith Batson, Jacob Lawler. Those two were 24th, 25th in points. Really bad for them. And ran out the field was Michael Norman, who had a great qualifying effort, but the three car caught up in a wreck early today and ended up last. So not a good day for the Norman car or the team today. But uh, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I'll update everybody on Facebook more of the chase lock-in scenarios since it'll be a little bit more clearer now with only two races left. Darlington's coming up in race 26. Still trying to decide where I'm going to go. Been flip-flopping between a couple of racetracks, but uh, hopefully I'll have it decided by the Darlington race because I'll obviously have to have it for the next one after that. But uh, another first-time winner today in Michael Walton this season. Congrats to him. Well-fought victory and perfect place to be. And almost got caught by Joseph Lombard in slow traffic, but Walton was able to manage to get away from it and pick up the victory for the 10 team. One last time, thank you guys for watching. Give this video a like. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to keep up with the channel and the series itself. And, uh, yeah, that's all i got to say about that. I will see you guys next time. One last time, congrats to the whole Everham number 10 team and Michael Walton on the first career victory. I will see you guys at Darlington for race 25 of the season. And the chase is almost here. Just two races away, and the chase field will be set. What's going to happen at Darlington? We'll see what the lady in black has to say as the chase is about to be set up very soon. Who will she tame and who will she bite? We'll find out then. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Probably not, but I just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas, and I hope you like this video for today. I will see you guys next time, very soon, and thanks for watching this digest for you. I'll see you guys later, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Bye! the lifetime way How did I get up there? Oh, <laughs> The Cadre Rohe Raider View! This is gonna be a problem and Ryan Acosta! B200 runs! John Dillon up the hill! Justin Perry is on his back bumper! He's gonna get wrecked! Oh, he gets pinned behind the 51! It's, uh, that's all it takes! John Dillon's going back to victory lane! This time the boundary series, John Dillon takes the Daytona 500!